Hey guys, how's it going? It's Shinobi here, and I got a video for you. New patch 1.0.5 finally came out, and in this episode I'm going to be talking about some changes on it, uh, some of my tips from me personally to help you guys out, maybe gearing up a little bit quicker, uh, maybe just figuring out what do I do. So much comes out, you know, when a big patch comes out, and there's so much in it, you pretty much say to yourself, wow, it's a little overwhelming, where do I start? So hopefully this guide right here and some tips that I give you, um, pretty much telling you what I'm doing currently, will help you out in the future. Remember to hit that like button if you could, that definitely helps me out here on the channel. And join the Ninja Army by hitting subscribe above if you did like this video. First thing I want to talk about is going to be the new Key Wardens. Now, there's this new item that has come out, I'll probably post a picture on the screen. This new ring that you can get that is just ridiculously good, and it's buying on account, so you can give it to your other characters. You're leveling up another character. Um, so a lot of people have been trying to gather that. And how do you gather that? Well. I'm going to put the patch notes down below that explain a lot more in detail. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of do bullet points here on how you exactly get that. Well, in each of the acts, if you do the MP levels, is going to be a Key Warden. In each one, so Act 1, Act 2, Act 3, Act 4, there's going to be a Key Warden in each act. So, by killing them, you have an MP1, which is Monster Power 1, you have a 10% chance for the key to drop. As you go up in the MP levels, you're going to have a higher chance, 20%, 30%, 40%. It goes all the way up to 100%. Now, MP10 is very hard, and I'm going to get more into that in just a minute. However, that's pretty much what I'm doing right now, is I'm kind of just farming the keys, but at the same time, you know, obviously these guys are bosses. So you'll see in the background that I'm actually killing them, killing them on both my Demon Hunter and my Barbarian. Now, I'm doing this because... They are like boss mobs. You know, in the past we would do, you know, if you're in Act 1, you would do, uh, you know, the Warden, then you do like Butcher, and you kill like elite packs in between. And the reason you kill bosses is because they have, they drop more items typically. So you have more chances of finding a legendary, more chances of finding better quality items. But this boss is actually a boss too, these Key Wardens. They drop the same amount of items as someone like Butcher. I'm pretty sure that they. Butcher might drop one or two more. Um, I haven't really tested that out, but you'll see on the screen just how many items drop when I do kill them. So uh, definitely really good there. So add that into your rotation. If you normally farmed Act 1 before and you wanted to continue farming Act 1, which is definitely fine, then just make sure you add in the key guy to your rotation. Just go to the first one there and like I said, down below in the patch notes, it'll tell you uh, the locations on each one of these guys. So it's not very very hard to find these guys at all. But right now, what they did with the axe, if you're doing monster power 1 through 10, doesn't matter which act you do. Whatever act you do, the elites and stuff are going to all be I-63 elites. So their healths are all going to scale the same. Before, when you did act 1 and you did Act 3, Act 3 mobs had three times the amount of health as the Act 1 mobs, but now it's all equalized. So it doesn't matter which Act that you do, if you pick MP1 and you do that in an Act 1 or you do it in Act 3, the healths are still going to be the same for the Elite Packs and the Rare Packs, Champ Packs and all that stuff. So that's something to take into consideration. In my opinion, pick whatever Act is easiest for you to farm the best for you. Currently a lot of people are doing Act 1 and I'm still doing Act 1 as well, just because Act 3, the mobs, the only difference that you're going to really have is that the environment's going to be different, the type of mobs that you're going to fight, the type of uh, monsters you're going to fight are going to be different. So, take that into consideration. Like, you know, for instance, if you're a demon hunter and phase beasts are a real pain in the butt for you, okay, don't do Act 3. You know, do Act 1. Um, however, it's really up to you what you want to do for there, but in my opinion, still the best two Acts for leveling up and for farming are going to be Act 1 and Act 3. Now I put this thing on the screen for you just kind of give you some tips and everything on finding the best monster power level that you're going to do while Inferno. Now really just finding the best thing I can tell you on finding the best monster power to play on obviously the 
the higher up you play on, the better bonuses you're going to get. You can see that the mob's health increase, 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 the mob's damage increase, 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 the XP goes up, everything goes up. So, you know, obviously if you're doing MP10, 160% extra experience is going to be really nice. Same with that 250% magic find bonus. Now, this is the bonuses you get right when you join in. This is not after you have five stacks of the Nephilim Valor. This is right when you join in. So as soon as you zone in to MP10, you have 250%. Now whether or not you can kill one of the elites or not, that's the question. So what I'm doing right now is I'm kind of going through MP1. Okay, this is too easy. MP2. Okay, this is too easy. Do that because that's going to be the best way for you to find. Try and do the highest level that you can do that you can farm kind of easily and that you can kind of just you get, get a good route going and make it nice and smooth transition. Because if you just, you know, you push yourself really hard and you keep dying over and over again, it's not worth it. So don't do that. Uh, you know, obviously, if your damage isn't very high, um, survivability and damage are everything in this patch. Uh, you know, how long it takes you to kill the mob, and then weigh that within how much survivability you need to survive the mob. Those are going to be big key factors. So something like a Barbarian, you want to try and up your damage as much as you can, and your survivability, like your resistance, uh, life on hit, stuff like that, and everything like that. So someone like a Demon Hunter, uh, you know, there have been glass cannons in the past, maybe you want to go for a more tanky build. Um, or maybe you want to go for like a kiting build. If you're going to go for a kiting build, you got to make sure your damage is really high. So when you're doing damage, that it counts. So I'll get all to that for like guides in the future and stuff. But I wanted to show you this thing right here and kind of give you some, you know, some little tips on all that stuff. So um, that's pretty much what you should do for this. So just kind of find the best MP level that you can do. And you can do real smooth and have a really good smooth transition. Now another thing that Blizzard did is they doubled, if you're doing MP level 1 through 10, they doubled the legendary drops. You're seeing legendaries like crazy on the auction house. And you'll see that I actually found one in this video here in the background. And it wasn't the greatest. I mean it has a cool effect on it, but I mean it has dexterity on a two-hander, two-hand mace. So uh, definitely did not get very lucky there. Um, however... Fighting legendaries is always nice, always exciting for people, and they did double that percentage for it to drop. We'll see how it plays out in the future. All I know is, if you're looking through the auction house, it's legendaries everywhere. People are finding them like crazy, you know, so going to buy one off the auction house is actually going to be, uh, you know, much cheaper than it has been in the past. That's what I want to talk about also, is how gear... If you're just coming back to the game, there's so many people playing right now because a lot of people just came back that the auction house is full of items. So you can literally get gear. You know, some of my gear, for instance, I was looking on my Demon Hunter. I spent a couple hundred million gold on all of my Magic Find gear to have max Magic Find when there was no cap before, but it was the most that you could get on a Demon Hunter. And I, you know, I spent a couple hundred million on that, and then I looked on the auction house like just yesterday. And to match up all those items, and I'd probably only get like 50 million now. So the prices have been coming down like crazy. Um, so definitely something to consider. That's why I'm probably going to be selling my Magic Find gear. Uh, I'm probably going to obviously lose gold, but I made a lot of gold using it. Um, but that's what I think right now for you guys. If you're gearing up and you say, hey, I want to try a new class. I want to try you know, a new spec, new build, something like that, or your gear is just not very good, keep that in mind that the prices have come down a lot, and don't just buy a legendary because it's a legendary. Uh, you know, I've actually went and looked at items that were legendaries that had the same stats as a rare item, and it was like 30 million for the legendary and 3 million for the rare item. So keep in mind, search by stats, don't search by color. <laughs> And I did just talk a second ago about Magic Find gear and how I think I was going to sell my Magic Find gear. And the reason for that is obviously I need a little bit of extra gold. I sold all of my gold on the Real Money Auction House when I had stopped playing before. I sold, uh, I don't even know how much it was, like 80 million, something like that. You know, just to get a little bit of extra money in the pocket so I could do giveaways on the channel and stuff like that and pay a little bit of bills. Because um, I really didn't need any more gear anymore. My character had the best, you know, magic find that you could possibly get. I was clearing acts 1, 2, 3, 4 like it was nothing. Finding gear like crazy. So I was making good gold every day. So I was like, why do I need this gold? It's just sitting here. So I sold it. Now, with magic find not being as good anymore because of all the bonuses that you get from monster power and because paragon levels 
people are going to be leveling up much quicker with Paragon levels now because of all the bonuses. So as you're leveling up, pretty much Magic Find and Paragon levels, you can only have a cap of 300 with both of those combined. So say my gear was 300%, which it is right now on my, on my Magic Find Demon Hunter, uh, as I level up in Paragon levels, my gear is going to diminish pretty much. It's going to be less good. So with you know these bonuses on the XP and everything like that, it makes no sense for me to hold on to the Magic Find gear. Just mainly focus on damage gear that's going to help me out in the long run. But the cap does go higher if you get a bonus Magic Find from the bonuses from the MP level. So if you're doing MP level 10, then you're going to get 250%, I believe. If you have if you're Paragon level 100 and you have 300 already, you're gonna have 300 plus 250, so 550. So you know the cap only goes higher for the MP levels, not for like Paragon and the gear. The Paragon and gear are on the same level. So gonna be selling that gear. So maybe if you have Magic Find gear, do I think it's really worth it right now? I don't think so. I think leveling up Paragon levels and just getting the bonuses from it, each monster power thing is probably the way to go. One thing that I've also been seeing a lot of people do is carrying. Now, you know, power leveling is pretty much the best way to put it. In Diablo 2, you actually could power level people, and it was very uh, a very good thing to do. However, in Diablo 3, since the game's been out, there really hasn't been a real good viable way to do it uh, that was really worth it. However, nowadays, with the MP levels, you get the bonus XP for the Paragon levels leveling. So what that means is, let's say that I'm in really good gear and I can do MP8 like it's nothing. And if somebody else joins my game, I can still do it like it's nothing. That means that you take someone that's lesser geared, someone that can only usually do MP1 or 2, and bring them into your MP8. And they won't be really you know, helping out that much, but you will be carrying them, you will be power leveling them, and they'll be getting more bonus XP and doing more bonus stuff getting better items to gear up so that they can eventually do that on their own. And that's the whole point of it. And that's what a lot of people have been doing with the Paragon levels, is trying to get as high up as possible in the MP um, monster level thing. Uh, that is going to be definitely uh, a huge thing right there. So, you know, keep that in mind too. If you have a friend that's really well geared, ask if you can join up with him. Or if you're really well geared, maybe help your friends out. Now the last two things I want to talk about are going to be the two classes that I play, which are the Barb, Barbarian, and the Demon Hunter. Now, right now, they did change something on the Barbarian, which, you know, Whirlwind has been the, the best thing for the longest time. People have been using that spec forever, and it's a really nice spec to, you know, mow down mobs really easily. And you'd have all the tornadoes going and everything like that. Well, now it's a little bit different. And what I mean by that is with Battle Rage before... Whenever you would get a crit on someone, you would have a, a chance to get 15 fury. That would give you the endless fury, pretty much. And you can keep doing that. And with the tornadoes, you know, obviously the crit, 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 like crazy, you're getting lots of fury. Now, what they did is before, I believe you had like a 20% chance. Um, it was like a hidden chance. It doesn't say it on the tooltip itself, but it was like a 20% chance for you to get that bonus fury. And I think they knocked it down to about 8%. So... Pretty much what would happen before is you'd be spamming tornadoes like crazy and you get so many of them. Now you just really can't spam it as much. And that's pretty much the only difference. I mean, you can still do the whirlwind build pretty viable. I'm going to cover that in the future on the barbarian guide that will be coming up. Now moving on to the demon hunter guide. Um, what you should you be doing for Demon Hunter right now? I think that the best things to be doing is building up that damage, building up that survivability. You know, in the past, I have always thought that Demon Hunters are not a class that should rely on resist. They're not a tank class. They are a burst damage class. However, right now in the beginning of this type of thing, imagine doing Inferno for the first time back in the day. What did you have to do? Well... What I had to do was I had to kite mobs, kite a little bit more, build up my damage, and once my damage got really high, you didn't have to kite as much, and you could just kill them really easily. So that's what it's all about now. It's all about building up that damage, and if you wanted to add in some resist in there, maybe use some defensive skills, um, then that definitely would help out too. Um, so take that in consideration as well. There'll be a guide on both of these classes in the future, and I may be leveling up some other classes. So if you have some suggestions, put them down below. Thank you for watching this video, guys, and uh, see you next time.